Today we talk about the Congo, yet another interesting African country. We call it Congo Brazzaville. Congo Brazzaville, one of those rich countries in Central Africa. Remember, it borders DRC, Gabon, and uh, of course other countries. But the Republic of Congo is different from the DRC Congo. Now, to differentiate the two, you have Congo Brazzaville, and then you have the RRC Congo. Congo Brazzaville has the capital city as Brazzaville, though technically it has two cities facing each other, two capital cities facing each other in Congo Brazzaville. But this country is small, less than 7 million people, less than 7 million people as we speak. But the country is rich. In terms of uh, oil, of course, petroleum is rich in other minerals. It is densely populated, but this country has had a history of coups after coups after coups after coups, coups throughout. It was once occupied by the French, ruled by the French. It got their independence in 1960, following a partial independence in 1958, it has been a free country led by a Catholic priest or an ex-priest as a president who was hosted only after three years. Then coups after coups, coups after coups. Today we have Sir Dennis Swangeso. Dennis Swangeso is the kind of a leader who has been a politician in this country since 1979. A military leader who came and the military council took over. Then he was uh, taken off the grid. Then he came back, then he took power, then assassinations. Today, let's talk about Congo, another troublesome country in Africa, but of course, a country with prospects, a country with minerals, but of course, a country with many poor people. Let us look at Congo. My name is Katom Kassa. This is Human TV Africa, and in the studio is Dennis Bongoli. Human TV Africa is here to give you information that you don't get elsewhere. We do document countries. We do profile countries, but also we do give you more other information, especially on human rights and development. Today, we talk about the, the Republic of Congo, or Congo Brazzaville. Let's look at the facts right there. That is the map of the Republic of the Congo. That is the map of the Republic of the Congo. Call it Congo Brazzaville. Now, in brief, Congo Brazzaville is um, a country located on the western coast of Central Africa to the west of the Congo River. It is bordered to the west by Gabon, 
to the northwest by Cameroon, to the northeast by Central African Republic, to the southeast by Democratic Republic of Congo, to the south by Angola, enclave of Cabinda, and to the southwest by the Atlantic Ocean. That is the Republic of the Congo. It is different from DRC Congo, as you can see on that map. The neighbors, Gulf of Guinea, and very far away, uh, Cameroon and others. This is Congo. Look at that map. Congo is different. Republic of Congo is different from DRC Congo. Some people confuse it, but these are different countries. Uh, Republic of Congo, called Congo Brazzaville, is a very small country. Yet DRC Congo is so big. But DRC Congo borders with Republic of the Congo. And the neighbors of the Republic of Congo are, of course, Gabon, and we see, we see Angola, we see Cameroon, and the Central African Republic. I've already mentioned that. Now, that is Congo. Congo was occupied by the French. Therefore, the official language of Congo is the French. We call it the Republic of Congo. Republic du Congo. Republic ya Congo, Lingala. Republica ya Congo, Kituba. Those are the languages. Uh, French, Lingala, Kituba, the main languages there. Now, the coat of arms, you can see the flag. Motto is Unity, Work, Progress. Are they united? The motto is Unity, Work, Progress. The anthem is, of course, in French. It has uh, the Congolese anthem right there. The population of this country is basically about 6 million. But let us look at figures right here from uh, World Bank. Let us look at figures here uh, from World Bank. And of course, other sources. Now, the capital state is called Brazzaville. The capital state is called Brazzaville. The official language is French. They have Lingala and Kituba as other languages. The religion, 87% of them are Christians, but 8% are not religious at all. <laughs> that is interesting. 8% are not religious at all, and 2% are traditional uh, believers, and 1% percent is Islam. Uh, these are Congolese, of course. The government there is what we call unitary semi-presidential republic. It is a so it is a country under an authoritarian man called Sir Denis Swangweso. Uh, Sir Denis Swangweso. Uh, Denis Swangweso. They are the president. Denis Sir. You can call Denis Sasso Swangweso. Denis Swangweso. Denis Sir Swangweso. Uh, there is the president, of course, Anatoly Karine. Uh, Makoso is the uh, prime minister. It has a parliament, it has a senate, and it has uh, a national assembly. Now, this country became partially independent. It was established as a republic on 29th November 1958. It became a free country from the French, uh, from the French people or French government in on 15th August. 1960, it became independent. 15 August 1960, the area, total area of this country is 342,000 square kilometers. Uh, that is uh, how big it is. And of course, it's 132,000 square miles. Uh, water coverage is 3.3%. Uh, and of course, we look at other factors here. You're looking at the area there, the area, water coverage, small country, telling population is only. 5.6 million people. Population is only 5.6 million people. GDP of this country is uh, 27 billion US dollars. Quite a big GDP right there. 27 billion US dollars. Given the population is only 5.6 million people, if you have 5.6 million people and the GDP is uh, 27 billion dollars, not bad. And per, per capita income is 5,000. Uh, US dollars right there. And GDP, GDP by 2023 uh, was about 14 uh, billion uh, US dollars right there. And per capita income had reduced a bit by 2013. GNI and HDI and other currencies, of course, the currency is called Central African CFA. You know, France is controlling these countries. And you can actually even see their currency right there. The time zone is UTC. And of course, um, they drive on the right hand side. They, their calling code is plus two for two, plus two for two. That is Congo Brazzaville. That is Congo Brazzaville. I give you again the map of Congo Brazzaville. Look at the neighbors of Congo Brazzaville. 
at DRC Congo is the immediate neighbor there. The capital of Congo Brazzaville is called Brazzaville. And other neighbors are Gabon, Cameroon, and of course, uh, we see the Atlantic not very far away uh, from there. Now, we go back to the history of this country, continue with uh, showing our people. This country was originally dominated by the Bantu-speaking people. Bantu tribes were there 3,000 years ago. This country had the Bantu people 3,000 years ago. Now, here's Congo. I should show you uh, what areas are from Congo. I told you Congo, uh, the capital state is Brazzaville, and um, there are other uh, uh, cities right there. There is a uh, Bateke Platoon, Rubono, Masendijo, Ruse, Mayoko, there's Mountain Barengu, there is Okoyo, Masaka, Owanda, Rikoa, and of course we have a Congo River right there, and of course we have Point Noir, uh, the Congo River is a big factor here, you have Kinkara, Kays, Robono, and of course Niari, that is how Congo Brazzaville is, I'm giving you the major areas, if you go to Congo Brazzaville, very small country, less than 6 million people, the country is rich. I'm going to tell you about the details of this country. This is the Republic of the Congo. Call it Congo Brazzaville. I'm still showing you the map so you can be able to distinguish DRC Congo and the Republic of the Congo. It is different. This is smaller. The cities there are Brazzaville, Rubomo, Point Noir, and others. Point Noir and others. Let me tell you about some of the resources of this country, some of the resources of this country, mm -hmm. quite a number of them. Uh, right there, you still see the map of this country. You have the Jambara, Owando, Masidijo, Robomo, Kays, Madingo, and of course, other areas there. The economy of this uh, country is regarded as a lower middle income country. It is rich in raw materials and natural resources. It is sector, it is sector is basically based on petroleum. Petroleum is the leading sector in this country. And of course, French companies are dominating this country's uh, oil. For example, French oil company, Total Final, Total Final is the leading, leading uh, company to exploit uh, petroleum from uh, Congo Brazzaville. I'll repeat, a French company known as Total Final is the leading company in terms of companies that are exploiting Congo Brazzaville. The French are still exploiting Congo Brazzaville. And I've mentioned the company, the leading company right there is called uh, Total Final. Total Final. And of course, there's another company from the Italians. It's called Italian Oil Firm, Agip. They also have Chevron Overseas Limited. I'm even telling you companies that are exploiting petroleum from Congo. Three companies. One is a French company called Total Final. The other one is an Italian company called um, uh, Oil Farm, Agip. And then there's Chevron Overseas Limited and the other companies. And of course, there's Mafi Oil, Mafi Oil, that have been exploiting uh, petroleum from Congo since 2008. The country is rich. Foreign countries are into this country, foreign companies. Sorry, foreign companies are into this country exploiting the resources of the people and the people of Congo remain poor. I've mentioned the companies that are actually taking away resources from Congo. Mafia Oil, Chevron Overseas, Total Final, and of course, Agip and others. They have been exploiting uh, Congo's petroleum since independence. They have been taking Congo's oil. Congo has other riches, such as oil, of course, wood, potash, zinc, uranium. They have copper. They have phosphates. They have natural gas. They have hydropower. They have agriculture. They have, uh, uh, they, of course, they have cassava. Uh, they have sugar. They have rice. They have uh, maize. They have peanuts, vegetables, coffee, coke, and, of course, forest products. Now, I've told you Congo. Congo, Congo is a rich country with less than 6 million people. It's a rich country. But the people of this country, as we are going to see in the photos, are too poor. This is Congo Brazzaville. The export of this country alone is crude oil, crude oil, copper, rough wood. They are all earning this country millions of dollars. 
for example, crude oil earned then 8.2 billion in 2022. Copper and them 3.2 billion in 2022. Stonewood and them 144 million dollars in 2022. Tin ore and them 122 million dollars in 2022. And they're exporting these products to where? To China, India, United Arab Emirates, Italy, Vietnam, and of course, uh, France. This is how these countries stand. And you can see. The city is a bit beautiful, but I'm going to show you the people of this country. And then you compare with how much is getting out of this country. They have, a, a, you know, Congolese generally are people who love music and entertainment. Here I'm showing you some of those entertainers. But I want you to take a closer look and see where are these people standing? Look what they that. Look at how dirty this city is. Look what the garbage where these musicians are standing. Look at where this young woman is standing and these boys and girls are standing. Look at the ground where they are standing. Look at how dirty, how poor the environment is. The people have been turned into comedians, musicians, entertainers. They are not even 7 million people. They have too much wealth. But look, take a closer look at this photo right here. Look at the garbage. Look at the garbage in this country. Look at how dirty the environment is, how sickly the environment is. Yet these guys continue to entertain. <laughs> They're the entertainers. They put on good swords and whatever. Then they go entertaining. The country is full of entertainers, but the country is poor. And this country has been under divorce. Now and again, People are voting. People are on the streets demonstrating. As you can see in that photo, people are on the streets demonstrating. Dennis Sasangueso has been in power since 1979, coming off the grid and going back. He's a soldier. He has been supported by the Angolans to keep power. He came to power when they had about five-term limit. He extended it to seven-year limit. Now, at this time, when they go to vote, it is seven years. I will tell you a bit about the politics of Congo, uh, Brazzaville. The first president was a priest. The first president was a priest who took power uh, through uh, uh, an assembly electing him, took power through an assembly electing him. The man was called uh, Fulbert Yolo, a former Catholic priest, was the first president right there and was elected by the National Assembly right there. Then Yolo was only in power for three years. Then there was tension. He was removed from power, overthrown from power by the military. The military took him out of power. The first president was Yolo. He was taken out of power. You see the poverty right there, out of power by the military. Then we saw another man coming to power called Alphonse Masamba Debat. Alphonse Masamba took power from Yolo took power from Yolo and again was elected uh, for a five-year term. Then we saw another man called Pasco Lisoba, who was a prime minister, also became a president. You see? Then we saw uh, Captain Marian Ngoraba, Marina Ngoubi, becoming a president. The country is having agricultural potential, as I can see. Maize, very patriarchal country right there. So you see Captain Mario Bongorobi, uh, coming to power through a coup. And then there was an assassination, an assassination later, uh, of course, after uh, when he came to power, Ngobi came to power and was assassinated in 1977. Congo has all these beautiful animals, all these beautiful animals, great forests, chimpanzees, elephants, everything. It's a rich country. You can imagine a country with all these minerals, a country with all this wildlife, a country with all these beautiful soils, a country with few people, less than 7 million people, a very fertile country with a very big forest, with a very big rain cover. This country is rich. Technically, everyone in Congo would have been too rich. Wouldn't have been seeing poor people in this country because it's a, a country with less than 7 million people, but with a big economy with a very good tourism sector, 
but the people in this country are poor. I've just shown you how the streets look like. The garbage in the streets. The garbage in the streets. How dirty the streets are. The villages of this country. This country is beautiful, but the country has had calls after calls. Italy leaders coming. I told you that uh, President Nguwabi was assassinated on the 18th March. 18th March, 1977, president was assassinated. Who came to power? Who came to power? Military Council uh, appointed another colonel, Joachim Yombe Opango. Joachim Yombe Opango was appointed. Then, who removed him? Dennis Sassangeso, who was a colonel. This guy right here. President of Congo Brazzaville, Dennis Sao Songweso, removed uh, another military leader, General Joachim Yombe Opango. That was on the fifth day of February, 1979. Colonel Dennis Sassangeso became the interim president. Sassangeso, from 1979, has been a leader of this country. Sasu ruled until 1992. Then he was a bit removed by the Central Committee. And then they organized um, uh, some bit of um, uh, elections there. Then he lost. Sasu Ngesu lost to a man called Professor Pasco Lisoba. Pasco Lisoba won Sasu and, uh, and in 1992, August 31st. Such Professor Pascal Isoba won, who was not a military man. What happened to uh, Professor Pascal Isoba? This man, Swasengoso Dennis, resisted, attacked Professor Swasengoso, I mean, Professor Pascal Isoba. Then Sengoso attacked him because remember, he is a soldier. And of course, there was a fight between the present forces and then Swasengoso. And then what happened is that. Sasengeso was able to defeat the president elect, was able to defeat the Soba, and the Soba's government fell. And who supported the Sasengeso? Angolans supported the Sasengeso. The French supported the Sasengeso. Sasengeso took over from a civilian president and he became a president again. He became a president again, and again he mentioned himself a president and even appointed members of his government, 33 of them. From then, Sasso then Sasso Ngueso has been a leader. From then, has been a leader, always winning elections, but through fraud. Always winning elections, but through fraud. Now, Sasso Ngueso is the leader. And I've told you how he came to power. By the support of the French nationalists, by the support of the Angolans and others. That is Sasso Ngueso right now. He has been in power. He changed from five-year term to seven-year term. I've been meeting dignitaries, and of course, he's a powerful man in Congo. The question I've been asking always, as I conclude this, what is wrong with Africa? We have all these people taking over. We have all these minerals like, in these countries. Look what a country like Congo, Brazzaville, small country, too much wealth. Petroleum, uranium, all these minerals. Fertile soils, I've seen the gardens, the farms of uh, uh, cassava, the farms of uh, corn, big farms. But who owns the farms? I've mentioned to you the companies that actually are exploiting petroleum from Congo. Italian companies, French companies, and companies from other European countries. And I've shown you how the streets of Congo look like. And I've shown you how the common man look like. People have been reduced into entertainers in Congo. People have been reduced into entertainers. Who do we know from uh, Brazzaville, Congo? Aris Mabel. There was an entertainer called Aris Mabel. We only know them about what we know about Congo? Music, music, dance, dance and drama. Countries are rich. People are reduced into comedians and singers. And then assassinations after assassinations. You can see how dirty Congo Brazzaville is. Not even 7 million people. Dennis Sasuangeso has been a military leader, a leader since 1979, removed off the power, came back to power in 1992 through assassinations, 
through coups and all this, all confusion. He changes the constitution from five years to seven years. But still, even with all that rich wealth, the wealth the country has, the people remain poor, yet they are not even seven million people. So the problem for Africa, as I've been saying over and over again, starting with that number, the problem of Africa is leadership. The politicians always connive with companies. The politicians always connive with companies, basically from the Western world. And then now the Asian tigers, India, China, and other countries. They connive with these companies, take away the resources of the country. The presidents, the politicians remain too rich. The population remain too poor. A case in point today is Congo Brazzaville. At Manisib Africa, we intend to tell you, for you to analyze, we give you these figures, we give you this history for you to analyze and find a way to say enough is enough and how do we fix Africa? First, by fixing ourselves. First, by fixing our leadership. We need to rethink Africa. We need to think what is putting us back. It is our leaders. It is our politicians who connive with companies, the oligarchy. Companies to come still from Africa, benefit the politician, but the people remain poor. If it's massive Africa, you're welcome to comment, observe, and of course share this show. See you in the next show.